Now, let me discuss about the phase 1 of the cardiac action potential. So, if you take phase 1 of the cardiac action potential, remember phase 1 of the action potential occurs with the inactivation of the fast sodium channels. Let me tell you what are the changes which are taking place in phase 1. Number 1, there is inactivation of right there is inactivation of fast sodium channels now so once there is inactivation right once there is inactivation of the fast sodium channels in spite of whatever might be the stimulus the sodium channels they not they do not get open Right? So, they become inactivated. That is the first thing. Second point is, second reason why you are getting that particular phase 1. The downward deflection of the action potential. So, what are you having in phase 1? In phase 1, there is downward deflection of the action potential. So, the downward deflection of the action potential is due to the movement of the potassium and as well as the chloride. Right. So, what will happen is the potassium from the cell, it tries to move out of the cell. Okay. So, the downward deflection all right, the downward deflection of the action potential is due to the movement of Right is due to the movement of the potassium and chloride. So the potassium it starts moving out of the cell in large quantities, right? And potassium is a positive ion. So once the cation moves out of the cell, then the depolarized cell will start its repolarization. Right? The depolarized cell will start its repolarization. Okay. Now, now you take phase two. Right, you take phase 2. This is called as the plateau phase of the cardiac action potential. Right, this is called as plateau phase of cardiac action potential. Okay, so it is exactly the straight horizontal line that is your phase 2, and that is what is called as your plateau phase. Okay, now. So, this plateau phase of the cardiac action potential is sustained by a balance, right? And what is the balance? It is sustained by a balance between the inward movement of the calcium through L-type calcium channels and outward movement of the potassium through the slow delayed rectifier potassium channels, okay? So, what is there? There is a balance. That means, neither there is depolarization neither there is repolarization of the cell. Now, there is a balance here. So, what is the balance here is or how is the balance maintained, right? And why are you getting that particular plateau phase? So, the balance is in between, right? The balance is in between the inward movement of the calcium Right, inward movement of calcium through L type calcium channels, right, through L type calcium channels. So, positive ions are entering into the cell, and at the same time, what will happen is the positive ions they move outwards they move out of the cell okay so there is a balance between the inward movement of the calcium through l type calcium channels and outward movement of the potassium right outward movement of the potassium through the slow delayed rectifier potassium channels, right? Through slow 
right through slow delayed rectifier potassium channels okay so positive ions are entering into the cell and at the same time positive ions are moving out of the cell and thereby there is a balance which is being maintained due to which you get a plateau phase of the cardiac action potential now later on after phase 2 what you have is phase 3 now let me discuss what will happen in phase 3 right let me discuss what will happen in phase 3 now during phase 3 of the action potential the calcium channels they close right the inward movement of the calcium does not occur in phase 3 so in phase 3 what will happen is the calcium channels right the calcium channels they close while the potassium channels right while the potassium channels they are still open right while the potassium channels they are still open now once the potassium channels are still open this ensures a net outward current which is responsible for repolarization so when the potassium channels are still open the potassium will be moving out of the cell and that is responsible for right outward movement of right outward movement of potassium that will result in repolarization all right that will result in repolarization next now you take this potassium channels the delayed rectifier potassium channels they close when do they close when the membrane potential is restored to minus 80 to minus 85 millivolts that is the point when the potassium channels will close okay so these potassium channels they close right these potassium channels they close when the resting membrane potential is restored to minus 80 to minus 85 millivolts all right when the resting membrane potential reaches to minus 80 to minus 85 millivolts that is the point when the potassium channels will close that is about your phase 3 so remember in phase 3 the calcium channels will close the potassium channels are still open so that is the reason why there is outward movement of the potassium and that will result in what is called as repolarization and this particular potassium channels they will close once the resting membrane potential reaches to minus 80 to minus 85 millivolts so that is about your phase 3 so we have discussed about phase 1 right that is due to inactivation of the fast sodium channels that means the sodium channels are completely closed and there is the downward deflection is because of the movement of the potassium and chloride out of the cell but the movement of your potassium out of the cell is more compared to that of the chloride which is moving out of the cell and you take phase 2 that is plateau phase of the cardiac action potential and this particular plateau phase is due to a balance between the inward movement of the calcium through L type calcium channels and outward movement of the potassium through slow delayed rectifier potassium channels and then you have phase 3 now let me discuss in detail about phase 4 right let me discuss about the phase 4 now phase 4 as already we have discussed this is the resting membrane potential right this is the resting membrane potential right that is when the cell is not being stimulated right in phase 4 All right. so in phase 4 the cell is not being stimulated now now a point what you should remember is it is during this phase 4 the heart is in the phase of relaxation so this phase 4 that is this phase is associated with diastole all right it is associated with the diastole okay next now remember certain cells of the heart they have the ability to undergo spontaneous depolarization 
in which an action potential is generated without any stimulation and that is what is called as the automaticity. Now for example, you take the SA node. In case of the SA node, the action potential is not similar to this. Okay, So they have the action potential in this way. Okay, so this is the resting membrane potential, right? This is the resting membrane potential for the SA node, right? So what does that mean? This particular resting membrane potential, it is not like a flat line, right? So you have a leaky sodium channels, right? Within the SA node, why you have the resting membrane potential being unstable is the SA node contains a leaky sodium channels. Because of the presence of the leaky sodium channels within the SA node, continuously there is inward movement of the sodium channels even during the resting phase, right? Now, once there is leakage of the sodium channels adequately up to the threshold, then it can fire on its own. That is what is called as automaticity. So, remember certain cells of the heart, right? Certain cells of the heart. What do they have? Certain cells of the heart, they have the ability to undergo, right? They have ability to undergo spontaneous depolarization. All right, they have ability to undergo spontaneous depolarization in which, right? In which the action potential is generated right in which the action potential is generated without right without adequate stimulus and this is what is called as automaticity okay so this is what is called as automaticity now you this particular spontaneous depolarization is fastest in the SA node of the heart Right, this spontaneous depolarization, it is fastest. Where is it fastest? It is fastest in the, right, it is fastest in the SA node of the heart. And therefore, this particular SA node, this is considered as the pacemaker. Right, therefore, this particular SA node is considered as the pacemaker. Now, the other point what you should remember here is the electrical activity that generates in the SA node is propagated to the entire heart. Right? The electrical activity which is generated within the SA node is propagated to the entire heart. So this is what is your the phase 4 that is resting membrane potential. So remember here the cell is not being stimulated. And phase 4 is associated with the diastole of the heart and certain cells of the heart they have ability to undergo spontaneous depolarization that is the action potential is generated without stimulation and that is what is called as the automaticity. Next if you take the spontaneous depolarization the spontaneous depolarization is fastest in the SA node of the heart therefore it is considered as the pacemaker of the heart. And the electrical activity that originates from the SA node is propagated to the entire heart. Now, let me correlate, right? Let me correlate the various phases of the action potential with the ECG. Okay. So, relation between the various phases of the action potential and the ECG. Now, if you take the ECG, that is the electrocardiograph, let me tell you what are the waves in the ECG. So, you have what is called as the P wave, then you have the QRS complex, then you have the T wave, right? Then you have the T wave. So, P, QRS, and then the T wave. Now, you take phase 0 and as well as phase 1, right? Phase 0 and phase 1, they will correlate with the QRS complex of the ECG, 
what is QRS complex? It is nothing but your ventricular depolarization. So in the entire cardiac action potential, where is like your depolarization taking place? That is in phase zero, right? And so remember phase zero and to certain extent phase one, it corresponds to QRS complex. So phase zero and as well as phase one, it corresponds to the QRS complex. Now later on, you take the phase two, right? You take phase two. Now if you see the waves here, like you have Q, R, S and then T wave. Now in between the S wave and as well as the T wave, this is what is called as the ST segment. Right, this is what is called as the ST segment. Okay, the isoelectric baseline what is there in between S and T is what is called as the ST segment. Remember the ST segment of your ECG it corresponds to the plateau phase. Right, it corresponds to the plateau phase. Right, this is a very important point that you need to remember. So ST segment of the ECG it corresponds to the plateau phase. Now you take the T wave. What does the T wave represents in the ECG? It represents the ventricular repolarization. So in the cardiac action potential which phase corresponds to the repolarization that is your phase 3. So phase 3 it corresponds to your T wave. Right phase 3 it corresponds to your T wave in the ECG. So what is your T wave? T wave is nothing but repolarization. All right, T wave, it corresponds to the repolarization of the cardiac action potential. So remember phase zero and phase one that corresponds to the QRS complex. Phase two, it corresponds to the ST segment that is your plateau phase. Phase three, it corresponds to the T wave of the ECG which is nothing but repolarization phase.